Okay, so hi everyone. Today we are going to be talking about an important neurological emergency that is status epilepticus. So a simple understanding of status epilepticus is when the patient has continuous seizures without regaining consciousness in the interictal period. Okay, and the most common type of status epilepticus that we encounter is that because of continuous generalized tonic clonic seizures. So this is known as generalized convulsive status epilepticus. You can also have non-convulsive status epilepticus. Okay, so what is the duration of seizures to say that the patient is in status epilepticus? So the old definition was more than 30 minutes. So this definition was uh, put in place because your permanent neurological deficits usually occur after 30 minutes of continuous seizures. But however, as per the International League Against Epilepsy, for generalized tonic-clonic seizures, when it lasts for more than 5 minutes, very very important MCQ, when it lasts for more than 5 minutes, focal seizures lasting for more than 10 minutes, and absent seizures, and absent seizures lasting for 5 to 10 minutes. Okay, so these are the new duration cutoffs for considering a patient to be in status epilepticus because we can't wait for 30 minutes to start treatment because by that time the patient will develop permanent neurological deficits. So it's very important that we start early. So even when the patient is having continuous GTCS for more than 5 minutes or continuous focal seizures for more than 10 minutes, the patient is considered to be in status epilepticus. And remember the mortality rate is very high. It's about 20 to 30 percentage. Okay. Now, what are the important causes of status? The most important and most common cause is going to be non-compliance to anti-epileptic therapy or anti withdrawal. And then metabolic causes like hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, uremic seizures and hyponatremia. Okay, these are one of the few uh, common causes of metabolic disturbances causing seizures. And then drug toxicity, CNS infections like encephalitis, meningitis, CNS tumors, patients who have a baseline refractory epilepsy and post head trauma. So what are the complications of status epilepticus? So because of increased muscle activity, the patient can go for hyperthermia. Others will be metabolic acidosis, hypotension, very very important, acute kidney injury because of rhabdomyolysis. So the patient will have decreased urine output, high colored urine because of urinary myoglobin and raised creatine kinase. Okay, so rhabdomyolysis is a, a known complication that is known to occur after status epilepticus. And then remember as we discussed earlier, when the seizures are going to last for more than 30 minutes, the patient is going to develop permanent neurological issues. So this is known as epileptic encephalopathy. Okay, this is an MCQ question and rarely, very rarely, the patient can go for neurogenic pulmonary edema. So these are the important complications of status epilepticus. Now how are you going to treat status epilepticus? So like for any other disease, first ABC, that is airway breathing circulation. So after you stabilize that, you are going to secure a large bore IV line. Send investigations, send important investigations for blood glucose, renal function test, serum electrolytes and a toxic drug panel. Then start the patient on IV fluids. Ideally, normal saline infusion. And in case you are suspecting malnutrition or alcoholism to be important contributing factors in this particular case, you can go ahead and add glucose and thiamine. Never add glucose alone. Always add it along with thiamine in these cases. Next. The next what we are going to give is IV benzodiazepines. Don't directly rush to give injection phenytoin infusion. First you have to give IV benzodiazepines. So the benzodiazepine of choice is going to be lorazepam because this has a longer duration of action compared to the other benzodiazepines. The dose is 0.1 mg per kg with a maximum push rate of 2 mg per minute. Okay, you can also give diazepam 2 mg per minute push rate up to a maximum dose of 20 mg. Midazolam which is an ultra short acting benzodiazepine at a rate of at a, at a dose of 0.2 mg per kg and then clonazepam at 0.015 mg per kg. Okay, so remember if you are not able to secure an IV line, don't wait to give a benzodiazepine. You can go ahead and give it IM. The patient is con continuously throwing seizures. You might not be able to secure an IV line easily. So don't wait for an IV line. You can go ahead and directly give the benzodiazepine intramuscularly. So after you have given benzodiazepines, your next drug you are going to give is parenteral anti-epileptic drugs. Okay, so here we have phenytoin. Okay, so phenytoin is given as an IV infusion, 15 to 20 mg per kg at a rate of less than 50 mg per minute. Remember, do not infuse it at a faster rate. So what are the issues with phenytoin? So it cannot be given IM. You are not able to secure an IV, uh, IV line. You cannot give phenytoin IM. 
and the carrier fluid is always normal saline because phenytoin is going to precipitate in other IV fluids. It can cause hypotension. It can also cause heart block and arrhythmia. So it's very important. Ideally, phenytoin infusion should be given with ECG monitoring. Okay, and it can cause severe thrombophlebitis. So these are the issues with phenytoin. So then we have the prodrug of phenytoin that is phosphenytoin. Okay, so remember phosphenytoin is more water soluble. You can give it IV, you can also give it IM, very, very important. And the dose is 15 to 20 mg phenytoin equivalents per kg. And you can give it at a faster rate of 50 to 75 mg per minute. But remember, even though you're giving it, a, giving it at a faster rate, the onset of action is the same for phosphenytoin and phenytoin because phosphenytoin is a pro-drug it eventually has to get converted to phenytoin then only exert its anti-epileptic activity so even though it's given at a faster rate uh, for both phenytoin and phosphenytoin the onset of action is going to be the same so what are the advantages over phenytoin so as we discussed earlier it's more water soluble so it can be infused at a faster rate you can give it im very very important advantage and the toxicity profile is less compared to phenytoin compared to phenytoin the other anti epileptic drugs that, be, that can be given IV over here are injection valproic acid 20 to 30 mg per kg and injection levetiracetam 20 to 30 mg per kg. Okay, so most of your status epilepticus is going to get treated at this point. But in case the patient is still throwing seizures after this point, then the patient is probably in early refractory status epilepticus. Okay, this is when the seizures are lasting for more than 30 minutes to up to 48 hours. Okay, important MCQ. This duration is very important MCQ. So, early refractory status epilepticus when the patient is continuously throwing seizures after 30 minutes for up to 48 hours. Okay, so at this point, there are two things you have to consider. You have to consider mechanical ventilation. Okay, so consider endotracheal intubation and mechanical ventilation and rule out psychogenic seizures or pseudo seizures. So, these two points should be considered at this point okay so if the seizures are still persisting after giving iv antiepileptics you have to consider mechanical ventilation and you also have to rule out psychogenic seizures so next what you're going to do is you're going to give iv infusions so what are the drugs which are given is you can give iv metazolum infusion which is given at a low loading dose of 0.2 mg per kg followed by an infusion at 0.2 to 0.6 mg per kg per hour infusion and then you can give propofol which is given at a bolus dose of 2 mg per kg followed by 2 to 10 mg per kg per hour infusion. The problem problem with propofol, it can cause propofol syndrome. Okay, so this is an MCQ question where you have hypertriglyceridemia, which can eventually cause pancreatitis, shock and acidosis. Okay, so at this point, the patient is still having seizures. You might have to try pentobarbital. So injection pentobarbital is given at 5 mg per kg loading dose followed by 1 to 5 mg per kg per hour infusion up to a maximum dose of 20 mg per kg. So at this point, if the patient is still having seizures, you might have to consider late refractory late refractory status epilepticus. That is when the patient is having seizures for more than 48 hours. More than 48 hours. So your final resort would be going for general anesthesia. Okay, finally you might have to go for general anesthesia. Okay, so let's summarize our treatment for status epilepticus. So you have a patient who's coming with status epilepticus that is generalized tonic-clonic seizures for more than 5 minutes or focal seizures for more than 10 minutes or absent seizures for 5 to 10 minutes. What you're going to do is ABC, airway breathing circulation. You're going to secure a large bore IV line and you're going to send investigations. You're going to send glucose, renal function test, serum electrolytes and a toxic drug panel. And you're going to start the patient on IV fluids. IV fluids, ideally normal saline. Okay, so after you've done this, you're going to start the patient on IV benzodiazepines. The benzodiazepine of choice is over here lorazepam because of its long duration of action. You can also give diazepam, midazolam and clonazepam. So after you are given your IV benzodiazepines, you are going to give your IV anti-epileptic drugs. The two important drugs that you should know over here are phenytoin and phosphenytoin.
Okay, so at this point the seizures are still persisting. You have to consider early, early refractory status epilepticus. So remember the duration cutoff over here is more than 30 minutes up to 48 hours. And remember at this point you have to consider two things. You might have to intubate and mechanically ventilate the patient and you have to rule out pseudo seizures or psychogenic seizures. Alright, so after you have done this, you have to go for your IV infusions. You are going to try your IV infusions. So you can try Midas infusion or you can try Propofol infusion. If the patient is still having seizures, you might have to consider IV pentobarb. And if the patient is still having seizures at this point, you will have to consider late refractory status epilepticus. That is seizures persisting for more than 48 hours. Patient still having seizures at this point, you will have to consider general anesthesia. Okay, so this is a summary of what we have discussed till now. I think I have covered most of the important points. Thank you.